So today we're going to talk about how you can uh, get started with the whole Blackboard Grade Center and what that looks like. So to get started, what I'm going to do is I'm going to head over to the control panel and I'm going to click on Full Grade Center. And that's underneath the Grade Center uh, mar uh, marker. So here in the Grade Center there are a number of columns that I don't think are uh, particularly useful um, because I want a little more real estate. So the first thing I'm going to get rid of is the username. So I'm going to use a little double arrow here and select hide column to hide the username because I'm really more interested in the student's last name and first name. I'm going to do the same thing for the student ID. Use that double drop down arrow and select hide column. Now last access tells me the last time the student logged into my course in Blackboard. Now this might be uh, very useful for you or you might feel that it's not very useful. In my case, I'm going to just going to go ahead and hide it so I've got a little more real estate. I'm going to use that double arrow and again select hide column from the bottom of the menu. Availability is also uh, another one of those kinds of things that's not particularly useful, I don't think, um, in looking at a course that's got a face-to-face uh, -face component, so I'm going to hide that as well. Now the only columns that I should have are just my total column and my weighted total column. And this looks a lot more manageable to get started as I'm thinking about how I want to organize my grade center. So before I can start to really think about what my grade center is going to look like, I really have to start with the layout of my course and what my course is going to look like and, and what kind of assignments um, I have in my course. So what I've done is I have a syllabus page here that has a breakdown of the different items. In this case I've got three tests at 10% each, two papers each worth 20% of the final grade, a group project worth 20%, and the participation in the course is worth 10%. So what I'll try and go over here briefly is just how we're going to make all of those things work in the Grade Center and what that's going to look like um, as we go to work with the Grade Center. So the first thing that I want to think about doing is creating some columns for some of these items. Now I'm going to worry about the weighting after I've created the columns, which is an important thing to, to bear in mind. So the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to create some columns. And to do that, I'm going to use this Create Column button. So in this case, I'm going to make a column for my test. So I'm going to call it Test 1. So in this description box, I can put in information that my students can see. I'm going to change the primary display to be percentage. Now this is what students will see in their version of the Grade Center, and we'll look, take a look at that later. In the secondary display, I'm going to select score. Now this will only show up to me as the instructor. So I'm going to go ahead and after this, I'm not going to worry about the category right now. Right now. I do need to assign some points though for this column. And in this case, I'm just going to make it 100 points. If I wanted to use a rubric, I could associate a rubric with this. I could also make sure that it had a due date. I can also set some options for the statistics of these columns. Now, I want the column to be included in Grade Center calculations. And in this case, I want the students to see the statistics that are associated with this column. So I'm going to change this from No to Yes. And this will allow students to see the average median um, scores for this particular item. I'm going to click Submit. And now I'm going to have a column that's here over on the right-hand side. Now that's great, that's really helpful, but I need a few more columns. So I'm going to go ahead and make a column here quickly. I know it's looking like it's going very fast for both test 2 and for test 3. And I'm setting these up exactly the same way that I did uh, for my test 1. So um, I'm also going to go ahead and add in participation here because it's also a column where I'm not worried about it being associated with an assignment. So by the end of this, I should have all of my columns inserted that are going to be grades that I'm going to input myself. So here we go. So now I've got my test 1, test 2, test 3. I've got the participation column and the group project column. All of that's added in here for me. Nice and easy. Now one of the things that I can notice is if I look at the total grade here, um, what shows up is the total points possible. It gives me kind of running total up there and it tells me the type of grade, um, the type of column this is rather. Um, and that can be really helpful because that allows me to see what's going on really with a glance for this particular total column. So the total column is a calculated column. It can only display the sum of the other columns. 
which is important to know because I can't actually change this um, myself. I have to input some information in the other columns. Now if I take a look at my syllabus again, I've got everything but my pa um, papers included here in my grade center. And I want to do the, grade, the papers a little bit differently because I actually want students to be able to submit a paper to me through the Grade Center. So in order to do this, I'm going to click on the Assignments tab, and you can do this in any content area. I'm going to create an assessment, and I want to create the assignment assessment type. And in this case, I'm just going to call this Paper 1. And in the Instructions section, you could copy and paste in the text from the assignment, or you could write a more detailed um, set of instructions. You could include a video if you chose to do that. Um, but really, it's just your description about how to complete the assignment that goes in this box. I could also attach a template if I wanted to. I could attach, attach any other kind of file that would be associated with this assignment. Um, and it would let me browse my computer for that file. Now here, I'm going to go ahead and input the points possible for this assignment. And once I'm all done with this, I also need to make this assignment available. And I can change the number of attempts that students are allowed for this particular assignment. So if I wanted the, them to submit multiple attempts, I could do that. I can limit the availability to make sure that it's available only after a particular day or until a particular day. I can track the number of views. I can even set a due date and a due time. Um, and finally, I can decide that this is an assignment for students individually or assignments for students as a group. When I'm done, I'm going to click the Submit button, and now I've got that paper assignment. Now I'm going to do the whole thing exactly the way I did it for Paper 1, now with Paper 2. So I'm just going to go ahead and get this assignment all set up. So now I have both of my assignments set up, and when I go back to my full Grade Center, I'll be able to see that here added to the far right are uh, the two assignments I just created, Paper 1 and Paper 2. And that's handy to know because uh, just about every time you add a column or add an assignment, it always goes to the rightmost column in the Grade Center. And that's great organizationally um, in terms of knowing where something's going to show up, but that's not really very helpful when I'm trying to think about um, organizing my Grade Center in a way that makes sense to me chronologically for the course. So I'm actually going to change that. I'm going to go to Manage. And from Manage, I'm going to select Column Organization. And this is going to allow me to change the order that my columns are showing up. So here, it's important to know that up and down correspond to left and right. The further I move a column up in this particular list, the further to the left that it moves. And similarly, if I move it to the right, it moves down. So in order to move it, I'm going to go ahead and click right on that little four-pointed uh, handlebar cursor icon business. I'm going to grab that particular column and I'm going to move it up in the list to the place where I want it. So now paper one is the first assignment, then students take a test. Great. I'm going to do the same thing with a group project. I'm going to do the same thing with a paper project. So now my grade center is going to mirror more closely the structure of my course, uh, my course's chronology. And that's going to make a lot more sense for me as an instructor when I'm going to fill out the grades to try and keep track of. Are these assignments being completed in the sequence that I've given, given them in the class? That, for me personally, is just going to make a big difference in terms of how I think about how this information is organized. So once I'm happy with the organization here, I can go ahead and click Submit. And this will take me back to the full Grade Center. And here I can see now that my columns have changed in their organization to more closely reflect what it is that is the uh, chronology of my course and assignments. So now that my columns are all organized, now I'm ready to really set up the weighting for my assignments. And to do that, I'm going to work with the weighted total column. Now my columns are already set up, so now I just have to tell the weighted column how it works. So I'm going to click on Edit Column Information. So here in the column information, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, give it a description so students know what this column is all about, really, because that's, I think, helpful for students to understand why they have multiple columns uh, in their grade center. I'm going to leave the primary display as percentage and leave the secondary display as none. Now, I've got a few different things that are happening down here. I've got two columns, one that are uh, one section that's called Columns to Select and one that's called Categories to Select. And I'm going to make Categories to Select go away for right now. I'm just going to hide that. So what I need to do is I need to move the columns from the left-hand side into this larger box here on the right-hand side. And to do that, what I will do is I'm going to click right on the column that I want to move in this box where it says Columns to Select. Then, after I've selected an item, 
I'm going to click right on this little arrow that will move it over in the middle. So that's my step two. And finally, once I've moved the column over, now I need to associate the percentage or the weight for this particular column to the final grade. So in this case, my tests are worth 10%. So I'm going to go ahead and input 10% here. Um, so now all I need to do is move over the rest of uh, move over the rest of my assignments and associate the weights with them. And uh, the grade center is going to keep a running total down for me down here at the bottom, so I can see what's going on. So I'm going to go ahead and move over um, the rest of these items. And in my case, I'm going to move them over in the same chronology that, um, that I have them organized in the grade center. And that's just for me personally in terms of organization. So here I've sped up. Um, um, all of my column business. So we can see that I've got 100% total weight. I've added all of my columns in. You'll notice that they've disappeared from the list as I've added them to the selected columns section. And it looks like everything is balanced the way that I want it to be balanced. So now what I can do is I can scroll down here. And in my case, I want this to be calculated as a running total. And in most cases, you're going to want it to be calculated as a running total. I want this uh, column included in grade center calculations. I want students to be able to see this column. And for right now, I don't want students to see the statistics that are associated with this column. So I'm going to go ahead and click Submit. This will take me back to my full grade center. And now my weighted column is all set up. Now, it's not displaying anything right now because I haven't entered any grades yet. So what's it going to look like when I start to enter grades? Well, let's see here. If I enter some uh, information here, Let's say that this student got a 90 on this first test, um, and then on the second, or this student, uh, the next in line got an 85, and our final student here in the class didn't do so well, and he got a 64. Now I'm just going to plunk some grades in here really fast so we can see how the columns are being calculated and what's going on here, um, because I think that will help us see what it is that Grade Center is actually up to. Now if I look over here, I've got this total column, and I have this weighted total column. Now the total column is just a sum of all of my columns added together. And you might feel like this is not a particularly useful column for you to have if your uh, grade is really based on weight. And if that's the case, you are certainly welcome to hide this column and hide this column from students as well. Or even delete this column if it's not important to you. You'll notice that in the weighted total, um, that's where I'm actually seeing a reflection of what the student's current grade is in the class, given the weight of the assignments that I entered just a few moments ago. Now, I also have a few assignments that are still blank. You'll see that uh, paper one is still blank, and paper two over on the right-hand side is blank as well. So before we move on, I'm going to go ahead and fill in all the rest of the grades here, just so that we can have a sense of what it is um, just so we can see how the Grade Center is actually doing all these calculations that we're interested in. So meanwhile, what is it that my students are seeing in the course? Well, my students are seeing this display of information. So they're seeing uh, a whole list of the grades that are available in the course. We can see where the statistics have been turned on. So you can see what students can see in terms of average and median. If I had given the students some comments, uh, the comments would appear over there on the right-hand side. So this is lots of interesting information here for me as a student. And I can see you know, the last time I was active in the course, the last time my instructor was active in the course. And I can also see where I, there are grades that, I have, that have not yet been completed. So now to take care of these assignments that haven't been completed yet, um, I'm going to go through what it looks like for the student as they submit one of these paper assignments. So here in the assignment section, I'm going to click right on paper one. And I'm a student right now. And here as a student, I can enter um, all of the materials that you've requested from me. I can see that there's the name of the assignment, the instructions are above. Now I could copy and paste in the text right here in this box. Or um, I could also use a little button down here to submit a file uh, that I browsed from my computer. So I can actually find a text file that I want to submit and attach that. I can also assign. Um, associate some comments in here as a student. And this is a, an opportunity for a student to give you some information about their paper that they're submitting. Now when I click the submit button as a student, I can see that I've submitted the assignment. There's what the submission field said. There are the comments. There's the file that I attached. And I can see that it still needs to be graded. And if I'm in the grade center, I can see this little green exclamation point that indicates that it hasn't been graded yet.
Now, as an instructor, when I go to the Grade Center, what I'll see is that same green exclamation point. And to grade that assignment, I'm going to click that double arrow and select Attempt Number 1. And here, I'll be able to see uh, everything that the student submitted. So there's the attached file. And I can open that in another window if I want to and read the whole paper. Um, I can uh, grade the assignment here, so I can actually uh, fill in a grade for the, the paper assignment. I can also provide the student with some feedback here in this box. Um, and this will go actually directly to the student when they log in to the Grade Center. So once I've done all of that, um, I can also make some notes to myself if that's important. Uh, some notes that I don't want the students to necessarily see that are just from, from me. When I'm all finished, I'm going to click on the Submit button at the bottom. Now for me as the instructor, I can see that the assignment's now graded. I can see how that's impacted the weighted total for the student. And everything looks great. Now, what does that look like for the student? Well, in this case, um, if we switch here back to student view for a moment, so we can take a look at what that looks like. On the student side of the Grade Center, they're going to see that their assignment's been graded. They see this 90 that shows up that they received for the assignment. And there, underneath comments, they see all of the comments that you sent to them. So in a nutshell, that's how you set up the Grade Center from beginning to end. Now there are lots of variation in the middle, but this is really the basics in terms of thinking about creating columns, creating assignments that are associated with columns in the Grade Center, and finally really setting up the weighted column uh, in your Grade Center, as well as understanding what it's going to look like for you as an instructor, as well as for your students. Hope this helps.